I pricked my finger again and I'm sewing a white dress. Ah! Everybody wants this dress. I know you do. Hi, this is Ariel. Bonjour. Welcome to my channel where we make fun costumes and weird stuff. Today we are working with fiber optic fabric. If you remember, I made a little fiber optic uh, cape for my mushroom costume. <laughs> that was fun. And I have plenty of fiber optic left, so I want to make a big costume. I want to use the, my big crinoline that I made a few years back. I don't really know where I want the design to go. I just know that I want to make a big ball gown and I want lights everywhere. So let's get to work. This is the crinoline that I made. It is an elliptical crinoline, which means that you have most of the volume at the back. It took me three days to make, with two of them being just fiddling with the placement of the ribbons and the hoops. It was very tedious. I think it's worth getting a pattern or a diagram with the measurements. Because, ugh. Anyways, I have this little bump pad that I am tying around the waist. These are very useful to hold the weight of the skirt because with most of the weight being at the back, the whole thing tends to swing down the front like a bell. <laughs> so the secret is having support at the back and adding little weights at the front. So with this great structure, I can start draping the base of my petticoat slash uh, skirt with a bed sheet. I'm testing some things to choose which fabric I should use as a base because the fiber optic is slightly transparent. You see my hand a little bit and I thought that if I use some kind of mirror underneath this, the light could be reflected and we have double the light on the outside. So I'm trying this with two metallic fabrics that I have. I have this silver and this gold. Lovely. So with the silver, it is just simply too dark. This is the white cotton here. And with the gold, the difference is not huge, but still I think the white is better. So we are going with cotton. One day you will get some use. And I also have a bit of this holographic thing that is magical, but the result is the same. The white is still better. Look at this fabric. And now, what? So amazing. I have debated what to do with this design for weeks. I've made so many drawings, so many possibilities. I thought about going in the jellyfish direction or maybe the angel direction. But this fabric is so annoying and so difficult to work with that I thought I have to do something that is at least a bit versatile. I need to make something that I can use in different costumes. I thought I would just do a giant skirt, so of course it could be something like Cinderella, but also I have a lot more ideas. Something with feathers inspired by the Swan Lake. And also I really want to make a galaxy dress or a universe dress with stars and everything. And maybe I could make more lights and maybe planets or something. But we need a good foundation. So I think it is a good idea to make a big poofy skirt. I know the Cinderella thing has been done many times, but why? Everybody wants this dress. I know you do. You do. You want it. I'm not saying I wouldn't love frolicking around in this kind of thing. And also it could look very good with the cape that I already made. So we'll see where the design go after this. Let's go, princess. La, 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 la. So this is the pattern that I made for my big Cinderella petticoat. As you can see, I made many alterations so it will fold down nicely around the waist. This is the center front and this is the center back. So it can stay in this shape with a more vertical front and a more horizontal back. This curved uh, waistband needs to be very strong to hold other skirts and stay in shape. So I'm adding a layer of denim to it, but I don't have enough. So I'm just using uh, scraps and piecing them together. <laughs> it's okay, it's not going to be visible. It's always good to find ways to use all your scraps. I attach them with a zigzag, so it's not really visible or bulky. I'm using this white bed sheet as a base for the petticoat and this is from a family member who was emptying the house. They are very strong, very good quality and also I just realized that they are hemmed by hand. It is very well done, almost invisible. I think it's very interesting to discover the handiwork of people who did this decades, maybe a lot of decades ago. And now I'm going to cut it off. 
So here I sewed my layer of denim between the two cotton bed sheets, clipping the curved edge and also the corners and turning it inside out. I'm also adding a seam on the inside near the waist. This will keep the inside layer from poking out on the outside. It's not super important here because all the layers are the same color, but, but when you have a different color of lining, it's very useful to keep it uh, inside your garment. Voila, we have a neat and strong waistband to attach the skirt. And then I can drape the rest of the petticoat with two pieces at the back and one piece at the front. I don't think I need to make a pattern or a mock-up for this. Cutting the excess off, way longer than I need, so I make sure that I have enough for a hem. No spoilers here, but this will be a big fail later. <laughs> I used the back piece to cut a second one. Of course, I don't have enough space, so I had to push the furniture around, but that's okay. I pinned the long seams and sew them by machine, cut the excess off and sew them again on the other side to make a French seam or couture anglaise in French. I know, it's, it's confusing. I just pin this layer to the waistband and I can start draping the fiber optic. This is a bit scary because you have to be really careful not to break any of the fiber optic. Otherwise, it will just cut off all the light on the rest of the skirt. This fabric is really tricky. I try to keep it as a rectangle, which is not super practical because the crinoline has more volume at the back. So it means that the front is shorter than the back and you can't really have just a pleated rectangle to make the skirt. But it kind of work. I try to use as little fabric as I could. I think it would have been better if I had used maybe double the amount, but it still worked and I managed to save some fabric for future projects. <laughs> you see how the front is higher than the back? And I cannot cut this off, otherwise I can't plug in the lights. Don't worry, we will make this work. So I'm marking where the waist is with the, a chalk. And then I thread mark this line by hand. Careful not to break any fibers. Handling this fabric with all the connections hanging out was so annoying. It kept getting caught into everything in my studio, including the sewing machine. And it is a bit rigid, so it made all the thing uh, difficult to move around. But it will be pretty in the end. Maybe. I'm using my thread mark here to gather the fabric. I've used some button thread, so hopefully it did not break and I sewed this line to the cotton layer using my machine. Now those two layers I pin and sewed to the waistband and I made so many mistakes. I really struggled with having it under the sewing machine because all the all these threads kept getting tangled in the needle of the sewing machine and all the little bits and bobs. Bits. Bits. <laughs> Bits of the sewing machine. And I made a lot of mistakes. Pick up the seam and redo it. It was like five times on different places, but now it's on. The gathering is fairly regular, but also you have this bob, uh, bump, because I don't want to fold this fabric, because if I fold it, I will break the fibers. Or at least bend them, and it might make problems for the light to go through it. Does that make sense? Welcome to the laundry room. This is the darkest place I have, so... So, here is the skirt. None of the fibers have been broken, so the light is distributing all around the fabric. The lights are plugged, and in the back I have this much of fabric, and in the front I have, I have this much of fabric, because the front is shorter than the back, of course. But, oh, it's so good. And also you see with all the light escaping from the fibers all along the fabric, you get progressively less light with the rest, with the rest of the light going through the ends. You see the difference of intensity between the beginning and the end. It only works in the dark, but it's so magical. I pricked my finger again and I'm sewing a white dress. Usually it's a darker fabric, but here... Uh, 
I see if I can clean it up later or maybe I'll just paint over it. <laughs> ah! Anyways, here you see the inside where I had to secure this uh, excess fabric. I'm planning to make a sort of pocket later for the lights. Let's just try this on to mark where the hem is. And I can finally cut the bottom edge off. I don't really know exactly what I'm going to do with the hem. Maybe leave it raw because it doesn't really fray. And that's what they did on the original Claire Dance uh, dress. If you've seen that, well, you've seen that, of course. But maybe I will make it like the edge of my cape because I really like this effect. I don't know. What do you think? But anyways, it was nice to cut off all these bits that kept getting tangled everywhere. Even though I'm not going to use them right now, just cutting them off and plugging them into the light gave me so many ideas. Look at how cool this is! Maybe I could turn them into plants from the bottom of the ocean, or like plants from Avatar, <laughs> or maybe shooting stars. Which kind of distracted me uh, to trying this on a long uh, piece of fiber optic. I may have spent maybe two hours unraveling a long strip of fabric just to try this. And I felt like a cool <laughs> TikTok girl. <laughs> okay, focus. So now I'm just cutting off the excess of cotton of the petticoat. Yes, from the inside because it was more practical and more fun. And to give more support to the fiber optic, I wanted to add a little bit of a ruffle on the underlayer using uh, an old curtain. Cutting it into strips, sewing them together, hemming this 15 meter long strip. Are you impressed by my hemming technique? Wow. And then 15 meters of a gathering thread. So much fun. And I was very lucky to run out of threads no more than 10 centimeters from the end, which is nice. Then before attaching the ruffle, I added some horse hair to the bottom of the cotton layer. Then I pinned the ruffle in a few places all around the skirt. I distributed the gathering very neatly. Then I sew them on by machine, and now I'm excited to try on the lights. There are 30 lights for the skirt, so it took a while, and I added a little bit of scotch tape to make sure that those did not come undone. This is very easy to use, you just have to screw this into the little plastic uh, bit. No need to do any electrical work, there is just a little bit too much uh, wire, but that's okay. I will make a pocket to protect all this. And when it was on the mannequin, I realized that I had made a huge mistake. See, I measured my hem and decided I would need to add the 20 cm ruffle. But I, I don't know, probably got confused and I thought I would need to remove those 20 cm. So now the underlayer is too short and it looks bad. And the ruffle, it gives volume in a weird place, so the skirt is not falling straight like I wanted. Ah. And I had spent four hours sewing those ruffles on. Why am I making so many mistakes on this project? So, after a snack, I came up with a solution. I will cut off the underlayer, remove the ruffle, and maybe I can use it for something else. Then I can use this underlayer as the pocket that I need to make to protect the lights. And for support, I will just need uh, to use a petticoat that I already made, especially for this crinoline, with just a few alterations. Sewing is really problem solving. I think it's normal to be mad at oneself because of your mistakes, but still, it's so annoying. 
Could you maybe share your most stupid sewing mistakes in the comments and how you solve that problem? That will make me feel better. So I put the skirt back on the mannequin inside out and I folded the cotton layer into a sort of casing to protect all those cables. It was sewn by hand and I left a few places open so I could access the battery packs to recharge them and plug them somewhere else. Here is the petticoat that I'm using. I did that for my Ariel princess dress. It's okay, but it has a little bit too much volume for this skirt. So since it's just two layers, I'm just chopping off one of those. And it's almost done. I'm just adding some hooks at the back so I can put on the skirt myself easily. You barely notice the blood here. <laughs> And then I waited for the night to put the dress on.